Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 56. Now this episode, I hope you're sitting down, because this is big, it's Sherman Augustus. And Sherman is fantastic. We had such a good talk, and we talked about everything. I mean, we went from uh, his time in the NFL, playing for the Chargers and the Vikings, to acting, to how he got into it, his process, which is fascinating. Uh, But I mean, dude, he did The Young and the Restless for 72 episodes. He also worked on The Nanny, Murder, She Wrote. He was a Klingon in Star Trek Voyager. He worked on Touched by an Angel. That's just the tip of the iceberg. He's done so many cool things, most recently Into the Badlands, which is one of my all-time favorite shows. If you haven't seen it, you are really missing out. And uh, he's back this season as Nathaniel Moon. And he's so cool! He has some great behind-the-scenes stories about that. Uh, All kinds of stuff, man. You guys are going to love him. So uh, check him out on Instagram and Twitter, at ShermGus. Also, watch Into the Badlands, Sundays at 10. It's phenomenal. Season 3 just started, and guys, we're not prepared. We're not prepared. There might be a couple little teasers in here, but uh, yeah. Without further ado, you know what? Let's get into this thing. Please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 56 with Sherman Augustus. Roll the theme song. This was close. It's always a gamble with technology. It is. It is. And the, the thing of it is, is like I was sitting here, I was watching uh, Avengers. Sweet. I didn't know how long the movie was. So, you know, uh, you called me back right now. So good. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, when I, with Skype, it's always like, I see, I know the name. Now let's hope one of these five people with the same names is the one I'm trying to get a hold of. <laughs> oh, no. It's all good. It's all good. I'm surprised because I'm hot spotting this uh, whole thing with the uh, production phone. Wow. So I'm surprised it sounds so clear and everything right now. So I'm using my like, – we're talking on my L.A. phone, so it was great. No way. How That's you doing? Awesome. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. No complaints, man. You know, mm-hmm. no cool. complaints at all. You're in Dublin? Yeah. I'm in Dublin. Dude, I'm, I'm I love in it. Dublin. I love I Ireland. Oh, you've been here a lot. Right. I, I've, been, I've been once. It was um, okay. last year, and I spent, okay. I spent a week and a half and toured literally all of it. We, wow, we good start, for you, man. Yeah, it's a, I've, I've got Irish heritage, and it's like, you got to go back, you know, at least once. Ex- exactly, you know, exactly. The people exactly. are great, food is great, music is great, I love it. It is, it is, it's, it's an awesome place. I mean, uh, I have a cousin coming in town uh, Tuesday, so we, we're wrapped now. Oh, right on. Uh, we're wrapped as of Friday, cool. so... Um, yeah, yeah, everybody, is feel, it feels kind of sad because everybody's leaving, like, tomorrow and uh, Friday, you know, so I'm going to be the last man standing here, so I'm going to do a bit of traveling for a minute, and then I'll head back to L.A., but, you know, it's, we, we've, we've become so close that, sure. um, you know, it's like when everybody's leaving, you, you're so sad, and, you know, it's like been two weeks of just, like, crying and bawling, man. Oh, yeah. It's been, it's just, it's <laughs> been, I mean, you know, it, because... There's there's literally not one bad person, you know, cast and crew. Sure. Uh, and so, I mean, everybody in the Irish uh, crew is just so great. I mean, you know, because we have folks from all over the world working on this production. And yeah. it's just it's amazing, man. And so it just goes to show you that, you know, you work hard and all the elements, all the components work together because it's just not about working with specific directors or writers is working you know with everyone and when that cohesiveness cohesiveness is there and everything is clicking and you know the whole show is working from you know top to bottom and you know you just go it's very rare it's very very rare and i think probably one of the main reasons why is we're not shooting in the states or in la you know? sure sure yeah yeah so you live yeah. in la you say you live in la yeah cool cool are I you do. from there but yeah, born and raised in LA. Born and raised in LA, and um, 
you know, went to, uh, you know, I played football for a while. So oh, I, know. Uh, I, uh, I could have went to SC or UCLA, but I opted to go to Northwestern. Sure. Uh, and I played in the Midwest and then, you know, a brief little um, pro career. You so, did. you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, if I'm going to continue to do this, I need to actually play in other elements, you know, and, sure. and all seasons. And so, I mean, you know, it gets cold in California. You play in cold games in high school and all that kind of stuff, but nothing like in the Midwest and, you know, nothing like in Northern California or something like that. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. it's huh? been, uh, you know, and then, you know, you start traveling and you're doing all these things, you know, as an actor. Mm -hmm. and working in in certain places and i gotta tell you i've worked in some cold weather before but the the coldest i've ever been was uh here in dublin really i know st patrick's day was freezing this year oh yeah it was uh fortunately i missed that because a bunch of us took off and went to barcelona so Uh, i was sitting at my (laughs) private pool on the fourth floor taking pictures and sending them back here and people were ticked off but i loved it (laughs) There you go. Yeah, it's, you know, but I didn't miss it when we got snowed in. I didn't miss that. That was like, you know, that was really, really, really weird because, you know, you trudge your way through the snow to the market and there was nothing. I sure. mean, absolutely nothing on the shelves. And I'm like, what is this? I mean, did a zombie apocalypse hit us? I mean, it was really <laughs> weird. It was really, I never experienced that before. I mean, seriously, it was just like nothing on the shelves. I was like, wow. Man. It, was, it was, it was, it was bizarre. Yeah, it was bizarre. See, it was so bizarre. See, you have uh, an experience that not a lot of the population has in that, like you said, you had a, you had a little stint in the NFL. I mean, you played for the yeah. Chargers and the Vikings. And the Vikings, what yes. was What was that like, man? Uh, you know, it was great, man. It was great to get to the big show. Uh, you know, when you get to these, uh, when you get a chance to accomplish, you know, things like that, your childhood goal and dream. Yeah. You know, uh For a minute, you can't believe it, but, you know, you're on that professional level, so, you know, you have to get over that and uh, apply yourself and just, you know, and, you know, you still geek out. Of course. How can you not? I would geek out. (laughs) I mean, I geek out. I I geek out because I'm on Into the Badlands. Yes. I geek out. Rightfully so. In Ireland, I'm on Into the Badlands, and I'm geeking out. And no matter what I've done in the past, you know, uh, I I really, 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 really geek out behind this. It's a trip. Sure. It is. I think it's important it for you to enjoy the things it is. that you're into. You it know? is. It is. It is. You know, like the first time I ever stepped on a professional football field, you know, I'm looking at the crowd and I'm going, wow, dude, you made it. You're here, you know. Yeah. And you have to shake that off because you got to get into it and get in what you're doing. Sure, sure. And it's just a different level. And, you know, the game is a lot quicker. The game is a lot faster. And even with when you get to this level as uh, when you're working on any any production mm-hmm. with, with great people and everybody's professional and professional and, and, and you, you watch certain people's careers and, you know, you start working with certain people, uh, you know, you geek out a little bit. I mean, yeah. you know, you, wow, I'm, I'm across, you know, I'm, I'm doing a scene with Ed Harris. Wow. Oh, you yeah. know, I, I, I'm doing a scene with James Gandolfini, you know, and you go, oh, wow. And you think about, oh, I remember my first NFL game. This is the same feeling. So it's that whole thing, man. It, it's, it's cool. Sure. You know, you geek out about it. You know, you go somewhere where you think nobody can see you. Just, I, 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 you know, I know. Yeah. You freak out. <laughs> you know, I hear you. You give yourself high five. You know, you know, all that kind of stuff. Of know, course, of course. It, I'd be worried if cool. you didn't, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I mean, I wouldn't be human, right? Exactly. You wouldn't be human. Exactly. And that's also when you are when you see people that are doing it and behind the scenes, they're also fans. It just makes you want to enjoy it more, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Because there's hard work that comes that that, that is involved mm-hmm. with all this. And, uh, you know, one of the main things I like to tell young actors is you have to know your craft. Oh, yeah. You know, you just can't just do this because you think you can just up, up and do it. You have to apply yourself and you have to go through, you know, there's someone that's getting off a bus right now from Skenosha, Wisconsin, going to L.A. And they might make it, you know. Yeah, Uh, sure. uh, And I don't I don't think right now, you know, back in the day, you had to get vouchers. You had to get vouchers. You had to get vouchers. You had to work on three different shows as an act, as, as an extra. And then uh, you can go to SAG and show your vouchers and then pay your money. I think right now, uh, I mean, you can just show up and just pay some dough and get a SAG card and try to get yourself an agent. I mean, right. I don't know. Accessible with technology and YouTube. Yeah. Cell phones, HD, all that. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I do believe in paying your dudes. I actually really do. You know, it. Go ahead. I was like the adage, like, you know, a dream job is still a job. 
A dream job is still a job. Exactly. You know, there's no difference between, you know, the person that works at UPS and what you're doing. You're still going in and punching the clock. Mm-hmm. Sometimes still for longer it. hours. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you know, there's no difference. Sure, at sure. all. So when you're playing in the NFL, what what drew you to acting then? Because it's very different. I always I always knew I was going to do that. I had a cousin that was an actor, and uh, Jim Bridges Senior, Todd Bridges' father, ah. uh, was our agent. So it was myself, my cousin. Jim Bridges Jr., you know, we all went to high school and college together and played football together. Right on. And, you know, even in high school, you know, we would go do a little Gatorade commercial or this commercial over there or whatever the case may be. And, you know, you go, okay, well, um, I know I'm going to do this, but I'm going to devote my time into what I'm doing right now, running up and down on this football field and doing what I'm doing. Sure. And I want to achieve this goal. Now, that's going to be there, you know, but when I stop doing this, I'm going to have, again reapply myself to the craft i'm not just going to go and just try to jump in you know and there were there were guys like uh fred williamson and uh bernie casey Mm -hmm. and uh jim brown you know uh that were you know they had a career in acting after football sure so i I just said, look, if they can do it, I can I can do it too. But what I'm going to do is actually really apply myself, and I'm going to study with the best people, and I'm going to learn my craft. Sure. And that's what I did. So immediately after football, um, you know, I called Jim up, and I said, okay, listen, I'm going to do this full time. I'm going to get in some classes. I'm even going to do extra work, so I'm there. And that's what I did. And that's what I did. I, I worked as an extra on three or four things, got my voucher. Uh, actually, I got Tab Hartley. Uh, I did a commercial, oh, there and they tapped heart me, tap hardly me, and I think it was a Shiseido cosmetic commercial. Nice. And it was the uh, Japanese version of it was uh, the the girl who was the lead was like the uh, she was like the uh, Brooke Shields of the day in in Japan. Yeah. And uh, so they came over to shoot this commercial, and Peter Pyros and I, and Peter, I think right now, Peter played for. Uh, Denver for a minute, yeah. and uh, Peter then uh, he wanted to do Night Rider, and now I think he's on the half and a half knots. But again, another individual that played briefly in yeah. the NFL, and you know it opened doors, you know, for you. But then again, you have to again apply yourself to what for you're sure. trying to do, the craft you're trying to do. So Peter and I, that was our first commercials. We both got Taff Hartley, and it was four days of us. It was like a dream thing, and. Um, you know, we would jump into the we jumped into this pool for two days straight. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then we, you know, all this mystical, magical kind of stuff. You know, you wear this cologne. You, you know, this is what happens. Of course. Kind of pools you know? just, yeah, pools yeah, just show you up. You know, this perfume. Yeah, this, this <laughs> perfume. And so it was a really cool commercial. And again, Peter went on to have a great career and he's still having a great career. And uh, likewise with myself. So that was our first commercial. Uh, and... Um, yeah, I just went on from there and just kept going and kept going and kept going. Everything else I did when I was in high school and stuff like that was kind of like uh, non-union. Uh-huh, of course. Which I didn't mind. Um, and then um, once the whole thing stopped with uh, with football, you know, once I decided to uh, hang up my cleats, you know, it's just been full, full time. Sure. Then it, then it was really game time. It was really game time, yeah. exactly. And you know, and there's there's been some great times. You know, it was a, some great times as an actor. You know, in my early career. Oh yeah. But then there were there were times where you know you really had to, um, you know, you got to, you, I got a lot of nos. Oh yeah, of course. I got a lot of nos back in the day. Of course. You know, that, and that seems uh, to be the name of the game with anyone who's successful at all. Like there's exactly. there's, a, there's a road of nos. Like what's that? An overnight success is actually ten years in the making. Exactly. You know? Exactly. You're absolutely right. And the thing with Hollywood is, you know, you can be waiting tables and, you know, you heard this before one day and then, you know, be a star the next day. Mm-hmm. And uh, it did, it just depends on what you want to do. And, um, you know, I have a specific goal and there's certain things that I like to do Sure. Uh, as an actor. I do have my box of deplorables. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 exactly. I had to use that. I hear you. <laughs> uh, I'm I, into it. <laughs> I, I, do have, I do have my box of deplor- deplorables that I stay away from Mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with those individuals who do those type of roles and those type of films and those type of shows but they're just not for everyone Mm -hmm. and uh, you know it can you know having 
integrity can either help your career or hinder your career, oh, yes. depending on how you look at it. But for me, I decided to uh, let those no's and let those things that if I wasn't, if I didn't respond to the material, I didn't do it. Right. And a lot of times, you know, people take that as, uh, you know, you're uppity and you're stuck up or, or you know, you think you, you're more than what you are. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Hollywood does that to you. You know, if they don't respond to you right. as an actor, you know, that's their prerogative. So that's our prerogative when we don't respond to the writing or um, the script sure. or, 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 you know, the situation that they're trying to do uh, or the subject matter. Absolutely. And if your heart's not into it, that will come across because the camera catches everything. Exactly. You know, the camera doesn't lie. Yeah. The camera does not lie at all. For sure. And especially with like film versus theater kind of stuff, you know, film, that camera's right up on you. So your eyes, it's seeing into your soul. (laughs) And if your heart's not in it, nobody's is going to be. Exactly. And you have to believe in what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. You know, and you have to make it real. You have to make it, you have to make those words that you're saying. Uh, your own, mm-hmm. but do it in a way that it's not fake. It's real. Um, I like to have every character that I do evaluate me. That's my Ooh, training. Nice. And before I even start learning the dialogue, I'll look at the dialogue and then I'll break it down and I'll just, uh, I'll just start going, okay, I will let that guy like say with Nathaniel Moon. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have enough time. Well, actually I auditioned for the role. Sure. And uh, I didn't hear anything for four weeks. And uh, I put everything on tape. Um, my best friend, Tim Cockshell, is a director. Cool. Film critic. And so we shot it. We shot it like we were shooting on the day. Nice. And uh, so, you know, we put a lot of heart and soul into that thing. It took us about maybe two and a half hours to do it because we wanted to do it right. And then we edited it and just shipped it off. Yeah. So uh, I did have a chance to sit down and, and let that character evaluate me. But once I got the job and read the script, I didn't read the script until I got on the actual plane flying over to Dublin. Sure. And, and um, you know, they offered the role to another actor. He turned it down and they hit me up on a Thursday night to get me no, on a Wednesday night to get me on a plane Thursday. I could do that. I'm, I can get on a plane Friday. Mm-hmm. And so they said, great. And then, you know, I had that weekend and then I was on doing that bridge scene on Monday morning. Wow. So, again, what I did on the plane, as I know everybody thought I was kind of Looney Tunes, but <laughs> uh, I started letting Nathaniel Moon uh, evaluate me. And what I mean by that, I would let the character ask me, what I, what have I been in my life? What have I gone through? Uh, to allow him to get up and off the page, to make the dialogue just flow like it is real. Ah. So that's what I do. I do that with every role. And, um, you know, uh, revisiting him again, I knew I was going to get more information and more to add to the backstory. So uh, I continue to do so. I continue to do so to make to make it easier for me, to make it easier for uh Nathaniel to be present so I always let that character evaluate me my day you know the night before what happened a couple of days ago you know remember what you went through a couple of days ago xyz da, da, da. yeah I remember that well that's what I need today in the scene you know it's it's yeah. it's similar to that day da, 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 da. and then so therefore I can just get out of my head about the dialogue the dialogue is gone mm-hmm. and I can make it real you know yeah. because I'm really thinking about that moment of yesterday last night two weeks ago last year I'm using that. Sure. That's genius because you're reaching yeah. into yourself and finding something where the feeling connects. So it doesn't necessarily exactly. matter about the words on top. Wow. Exactly. Well it's got to be real. It's got to be real. Somewhere down the line, it's got to be real. And that is the only way that I feel that I can have a real moment with the actors or the actors that are in that scene. Yeah. No, that's the only way we're going to have a real moment. Our only way I can have a real moment because if I'm, ha- if I'm having a real moment, then everybody's going to have a real moment. You know, right. Because actors compete, you know, to go, oh, wait, Sherman's OK. OK, Sherman, I see you. Okay, oh, yeah. well, I'm <laughs> And then that tennis match can start. Right. You know, that great tennis match can start because therefore we're throwing a lot of stuff at each other. And once we get it up and running really warm and everybody's warmed up. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, then I start letting I try to start letting stuff fly from my cerebral cortex and start ad living something here, even start making it even more real. Sure. And then we just go and we build and we build and we build. And usually, you know, we, we usually get that in 
one or two takes because we'll rehearse it for a second. Right. And, uh, you know, everybody's warm. And you got to be sharp. There's, there's actors on the show that you have to be absolutely sharp. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, sharp wit. And um, Nick Frost is, is definitely one of them. you oh, got to awesome. be on. you got to be on point when you work with Nick because Nick is just going to let everything fly. <laughs> and, it's, and you don't know and you're trying to actually hold back I mean, you're biting your lip. You're, you're you know, of you're trying course. to shut everything off because he just said something that's so damn funny <laughs> that you can break character, and he knows it. He knows it. There's a little twinkle in his eye. He go, "Oh, I got him. Of course, oh, I got her. Of course." And then you just start doing it. It's it's, uh, it's over. Yeah. And then everybody has the giggle box. That's you know? right. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, it's like when it's a kid crazy. knows he's about to break something, so he looks around to make sure people are watching. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Watch me break this. That's Oops, right. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's so fun. I mean, all the actors on this show are just, you know, exceptional. Yeah, just that's amazing. Great. You know what I love about your career is you've done so many different things. Like, dude, mm-hmm. you were, no, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people know, you worked on Murder, She Wrote and The yeah. Nanny. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. And you notice, like, The Nanny is, like, the only sitcom I've ever, I've ever done. And April Webster, who's a uh, top-notch A-list casting director, mm-hmm. you know, cast me in a couple of things before that. And, and so it came through. And I'm like, yeah, uh, sure. You know, can you do me a favor? Can you do this? I'm like, yeah, I'll do that, you know. And Nell Carter was great. That whole cast was great. And, um, you know, those were the good days, of tel- the good old days, I would say, of television. Oh, yeah, for And sure. um, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was just uh, really, really, I mean, the pay was really great. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, you know, those were the good old days. <laughs> and, uh, boy, have they gone by uh, and by. Oh, for real. And you even, but, did, you even uh, did a little uh, a little stint on Star Trek Voyager. That's pretty big. Yeah. You know? I played, uh, I played Haikwa. You did, a Klingon. Which, yeah, Cleon, which uh, it was the first time they had Cleons on Voyager. So that was uh, pivotal, p- pivotal, and it was very important. And, um, you know, they put a lot into that because um, it was just one of those things because they, you know, they were really, they really put a lot into that because it was important that that came off really well. Because, again, I think the show had been running for like, I don't know, four or five years before yeah. that happened. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, uh, it was Roxanne Dawson who um, who was on the show. Actually, uh, she she's directed me twice. She's a you know, great director now. Yeah. She's been directing a lot of TV. Uh, she directed my episode of um, uh, she's the Mentalist. Yes. You know, and she's hired me. She's hired me twice. Uh, and her husband, uh, Eric Dawson, is a, um, a big-time casting director in L.A. And uh, it's just really good folks to know. But yeah, that sure. that particular episode, uh, you know, I was the uh, the Cleon that takes bad Cleons to hell. Yeah. Which was, which was, yeah, which was cool, man. Gold. You know. <laughs> oh, if man, you're going to play yeah. a Cleon, you want to you be the yeah. River Sticks one. <laughs> exactly exactly and you know that's what they had you know we were it was the barge of the dead so you know we take this take their souls and their bodies and we just physically put them on the barge and just take them and you know some of them we would drop in the water and these alien sharks would eat their bodies you know and you know oh, it was this just is great. what i mean the spectrum of your career sherman i mean oh no. it's, it's awesome it's, <laughs> it's so awesome I, if i do say so myself you, yes you, know, you don't uh, have to I'll say I, i'm very <laughs> humble about the fact no, you know, it's just I've been lucky. I've been lucky. I have been fortunate to, uh, again, um, be in some really, really great projects. And, uh, you know, I, I look back on that with nothing but gratitude. And um, uh, I, I, I have nothing but affection for everyone who's cast me in, in anything and I've, I've worked with, you know, because that's very important, you know, to stay humble. Sure. And to, uh, you know, and you learn something. And, you know, I, I learn something every time I work with uh, great people and on good projects. You always learn something. So I'm grateful for that. Absolutely. Because it is a business. And, you and you know, oh, yes. you have to keep, as human beings, we have to con- continuously learn and apply certain things. So you always learn something from everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you say it's luck because if there's any, oh, yeah. if there's anything that I've learned talking to all these people on the show – is a mm-hmm. lot of people say it's luck, but from what I've learned is luck really is preparation meets opportunity. 
You know, exactly. so your, your work ethic, it's like, sure, there is definitely a percentage of luck involved, but when the moment arose, you were ready for it, you know, and then Be it's ready the hard it, work. You know? And you did yeah. it. You did it. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of exactly, edits, exactly. Seventy-two episodes on Young and the Restless, Sherman. Yeah, Sherman. Yeah, I know. That is work. I know. I know. I know. I know. That's bizarre, isn't it? I was 72. just looking at something. Seventy-two. I know. I was just looking at. Um, um, Christoph St. John had posted something at, from the Emmys the other day, mm-hmm. uh, daytime Emmys, and uh, I was just like, "Wow, dude! I, uh, I, I." four years of my life on that show and nothing but, you know, great people. Uh, really cool. And, uh, I, I take away a lot of, uh, a lot of good times, a lot of good times with those cats, really good actors. And, you know, that's a hard thing to do because with soaps, I mean, they get a lot of, uh, flack. Sure. But with they seem soaps, really I mean, hard. <laughs> it's very hard. So, okay. You're learning, you're working three shows one week, right? Yep. And so you get your scripts and you're learning all three shows Jeez. and are you learning four shows? Okay. So maybe you have 75 pages of dialogue to learn, Jeez. right? So, uh, my last year shooting on the show, I was learning three shows, four shows, actually four shows. Then I got that Friday, um, uh, 25 pages of inserts. And I used to think an insert was, you know, on film and television, you know, an insert means we're going to take a picture of your hand opening the door. Right, you know, yeah, you picking walk up this thing. Yeah, yeah, no, an insert in, in, in soap language is you have dialogue. And I've seen <laughs> soap opera actors have meltdowns, you know. And uh, you just have to just take your time to do these things. And uh, this relates to another story that I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Um. So I remember working on those pages and um, I was working on those pages. I was also shooting a film. Uh, my best friend, Tim Cox, who I had wrote and um, uh, Frederico Lapenda mm-hmm. produced it. It's called Bad Guys. Sweet. And uh, it was uh, Kate Del Castillo's first film. Uh, Danny Strong, who is executive producer of... Uh, of uh, I can't think of a show right now, but he's just finished directing his new sh- his new um, his film. Danny's won uh, two or three Emmys for Recount and you know certain HBO shows. Mm-hmm. Empire. He's a uh, executive producer on Empire, one of the showrunners, and now he's got another show that uh, another friend of mine's is doing. Uh, they just finished doing that pilot, so he's in that film. Kate's in that film. Art, Art Lafleur's in that film. Great character actor. And uh, a couple of uh, MMA fighters, um, Quentin Rampage Jackson. It was his first film. And the reason why oh. is because, yeah, and the reason why is because Frederico Lapenda uh, was his manager and he was a big MMA promoter. So gotcha. he told Tim, I'm, I'm going to produce your film. And he actually came up with the money and produced the film. So I'm learning that dialogue. Which we started shooting. I'm doing that and uh, learning my four pages. I mean, my my. 34 pages and then i get another 25 pages on top of that <laughs> so you just have to just you know yeah i mean you know okay dude you just have to apply yourself and learn these things and i pride myself of knowing every single word and being off book and not having to worry about what that line is mm-hmm. on the day and um i learned that by watching cicely tyson i was shooting Touch by an angel with Cicely Tyson. Yes. And these type of things happen all the time. She didn't get the new pages for the big gigantic monologue that we had in the kitchen. Oh, no. And so, yeah. So she said, hey, listen, uh, can I have an hour after lunch just to learn this and I'll be ready? And they said, sure. You know, so after lunch, we shot other stuff. And she came back. And this is old school. She came back with everything written down, handwritten down in the most beautiful handwriting I've ever wow. seen. Beautiful, most cursed handwriting I've ever seen. And she knew line by line that dialogue. And so myself and um, the actress who was playing my wife, mm-hmm. we looked at each other and it was one of those moments like, okay, um, 
we want to be actors. <laughs> she was literally touched by an angel to have those abilities. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and so I always go back to any time I get handed new pages like that on the day, I always remember that. Wow. That she did it, and that's what actors do. That's right. You know? And uh, I, I remember that like it was yesterday. Like it was Man. yesterday. It was so cool. So cool. That is nuts. And, yeah, it is. It is. And like I said, I've, I've seen actors just have meltdowns on, on soaps because, oh, you know, here's, <laughs> you know, 25 pages. I didn't get this last night. You know, Ooh, ah! Oh, of course. So just, and like soaps know? are such a well-oiled machine. I mean, Young and the it Restless is. is like over 2,000 episodes. I, it is. It is. It is. And I, what, I just think they had their 75th year anniversary. Sheesh. It's, I don't know. It's got to be intimidating. Five years, man. It's got to be intimidating to get it is onto intimidating. that set. You know, you're like, I'm the new guy. It, it is. Hey, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't envy uh, <laughs> soap opera actors. Yeah, <laughs> I learned my lesson, and you, you don't envy those guys. You know, uh, you have to do your work with that. Yeah, it is. And it is a grind. It is a, and it actually is a grind. I mean, we would pull sometimes 18 hour days, Ooh, and then you be know, back. and express. Oh, yeah, and be back the next morning. And be back, man. And be back. This, you know this this tangentially connectedness of your career, man. Touched by an angel. Oh man, Della Reese. Touched. May she rest in peace. May she rest in peace. That's right. Dude. Wow. Yeah, wow. she taught me something, me something too. <gasps> yeah, she taught me something too. Well, you know, I came into a scene with my hands in my pocket, and she just oh, said, no. "You need to take your hands. You, <laughs> you need to take. You need to take your hands out of you." There's certain things that people don't like. You with your hands in your pockets. I know Dennis Hopper didn't like actors. Mm -hmm. uh, using your hands really? all the time. Like know? talking oh, yeah. with your hands? Oh, yeah. yeah, talking with your hands. And, you know, he just say, hey, listen, acting is what's going on in your eyes. Ooh. What's it here? You know, and that was my first film was Colors. Wow. And it was it was mine. It was Don Cheeto's. It was so funny. I just finished watching Don, Don yeah. Cheeto and, um, and Glenn Plummer and uh, my buddy Jeffrey. All those guys came from Cal Arts. Wow. And I remember the day that we all auditioned, you know, because we were all there. And, you know, Leon had uh, his career had already taken off, but it was a bunch of our first gigs. Sure. A bunch of our first gigs. And Dennis, Dennis Hopper hired us on the spot. Wow. We were ready to go. And yeah. And it was it was intense. It was intense. It was it was very, very intense. And it was intense working with Sean Penn and Robert Duvall. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Fair. And <laughs> look up. There's a. Glenn Palmer just uh, there's a um, interview he did mm -hmm. uh, about a couple of scenes that he had with Sean Penn and um, and Robert Duvall and uh, you know they took they took it for real you know they were taking this whole thing as being the cops for real and so you might want to check that out yeah and, you know, for sure it was it was a couple of, they got a little abusive <laughs> but it was it was it was like yeah they were making it real. Sure. They were making. They were doing LAPD for real. It worked. <laughs> it worked. It worked. But it was cool. It was really cool. That's you know? awesome. No uh, hard feelings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always think about like uh, Daniel Day Lewis. You know, when he talks about his process, yeah. that he never breaks character the entire production. And when he won his yeah. last Oscar, he like thanked his wife, and she's like, "You've had to share the bed with a lot of strange men." I was like, "Wow, I never thought about that." You know, imagine yeah. coming home yeah. like, "Hey, Daniel," and he doesn't listen because he's Lincoln. You're like, well, yeah. hey, whatever works. You got multiple Oscars. All right. <laughs> whatever works. I mean, you know, I, and he's, he lives here in Dublin, and he's a shoe cobbler. I mean, you what? know, I just so, <laughs> yeah, course. yeah. He's, with he's, nothing he's to do with cobbler. the left foot, though. <laughs> he did nothing to do with yeah, the He makes all left shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he makes only left shoes. That would be incredible. He, he better. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's incredible. That is a little deep for me, you know, to be in character like Mel Streep and, and uh, Daniel Day Lewis the whole day. Oh yeah, uh, that would be a little intense. Fair, uh, fair. You Not know, because everyone. yeah, seriously, yeah. That's the reason why I like to uh, let those characters evaluate me, and I'll go deep there. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when I have my lunch, I, I definitely want to be Sherman when I have my lunch. Yeah, good idea. You know? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to yeah. be starting fights <laughs> you know? with with MK. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to be eating my lunch as Moon. You know yes, what I mean? exactly. You know? Just side eyeing, yeah. just yeah. sunny. <laughs> exactly, which means I can't take off my gauntlet in my hand, which means I have to eat my lunch that way. I'm sorry. That's We're right. We're not gonna That's do right. that. We're not gonna do that. The first episode, you got to use the rebar somehow to eat pie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? I did actually, I did, I'm not going to lie, I did actually, because it was such 
a pain taking that thing off because it's strapped around my body. And, you know, those poor, poor folks had to come by and clip stuff off and screw stuff out. And, you know, and there were there was two versions of that. And there was the rebar that was real. And then there was a plastic one. And, you know, but they both had to be applied the same way. Sure. And we went through we went through a lot of groin pains with that because of the simple fact there was these awesome leather parts that wrapped around the arm all the way up around the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of times I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to complain about this. I'm very grateful to have this job and revisit revisit this character. And I know this is not going to last forever. You know, I'm going to have to wear this for a couple of weeks, but I can do it. Sure. But, you know, you have to go to the restroom that way. And, you know, <laughs> and I was eating my lunch that way. And I was like, you know what? No, man, I'm sorry, guys, but unclip me because I got to go. That's right. I gotta, we got to figure this out. <laughs> I, get, I couldn't, you know, I'm not going to ask anyone, or especially the, the, our great wardrobe department, hey, uh, you know, can you help? Can you butt my fly, please? Yeah, I know. Uh, no, that's, that's not, that's not going to happen. We're going to get real close real fast. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're not suing me, you know, right. being court. You know, I had to button his pants, you know. Hey, yeah, of course. No, <laughs> They're no, just crying. No. You're like, I had a rebar it, hand. <laughs> I, had a re I didn't want to kill myself, you know. So, no, I, uh, uh, and they were really, they were really great sports about it. So, you know, the guys who built that in the prop department, you know, they were really great. And so all the prop department, the uh, the uh, department that made the actual uh, arm and wardrobe would all work together and apply that on me and apply it off. So it took three departments almost every day to put that on and off for about two weeks. Man, see that's one thing. Oh, yeah, and I definitely. I'm 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 glad you brought this up, Sherman. We're going into the Badlands. So the the the, okay. the, the attention to detail in the show, from costumes to props to choreography to writing, it's just no joke. It's one of my top five favorite shows of all time. It's, it's so amazing, good. Isn't it? it's, it's amazing. There's nothing like it. And it's and amazing. There's also no one like Nathaniel Moon because yeah. your entrance had like one of the most badass first lines. You're like, I don't run with the pack. I was like, who's this guy? That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah, at yeah, that yeah, sword. Wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that awesome? Dude, and you know, oh, because it was, it's, it's, it's a Kurosawa slash it Sergio is. Leone film. 100%. That's the way I approached it. So when I was on that bridge that morning, Mm -hmm. And Andy was, you know, Andy, Andy Chang, love Andy Chang, love Andy, love you, Andy, love you, Master mm -hmm. Didi. Uh, yeah, really. Um, Andy was open to suggestions. And so I'm like, it just clicked. And I said, you know what, Andy, while I'm here and you're doing the shot, why don't I whistle something? Why don't, you know, I'm, I'm on that bridge and I'm whistling. Yeah. And, you know, so this whole collaboration thing, that's when I knew that I can trust because it's all about the trust. So Andy did all of the, um, he directed all of the action stuff because that's what Andy does. Sure. And then I was working with Toa Frazier. I love Toa Frazier. I love Paco. Um, I love all our directors. But those guys would actually, you know, and even this season, collaborate with you. And, you know, I tell all the directors, I trust you. Yeah. The only the, the only way that we're going to get this guy again up and off the page is that, you know, I trust you. And, you know, some some directors just say action and, you know, that's it. They turn on the camera and let you go. Uh, not the case with this show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I meet with every director that comes on and I say, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. If I'm not getting it, pull it out my ass. And so we yeah. we we think we act, we actually go through these beats. And they, everybody goes, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. You know, not that I'm coming in with my ideas about how they should direct that particular scene. Sure. But, you know. You give input to I'm, your character. Yeah, yeah. I'm just coming in and letting them know, hey, listen, I think on this line here or that line there, da-da-da-da, um, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? Yeah, I, I like that. And so we try to achieve that. And if we got it, then I, I just let them go and go, hey, you know, you got that. Uh, do this for me do that there for me go. and then it starts getting more organic and i'm like then those are the times i can leave and go home and go wow what a dang good day man yeah what a day you know man and you get the coolest sword in the show so cool son oh, yeah. well done <laughs> well well you know I, I i get it back i can i can say that and but this is going to be uh I, you know it's, it's just gonna build yeah once we get to episode eight um I would really would like to get. I, I want to get your reaction and everyone's reaction. It's going to be epic. Of course, it's of course. going to be epic. It's uh, it's 
it's Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's Game of Thrones style. I mean, it's just all these things. And but again, going back to that Sergio Leone slash Kurosawa film thing, you yeah, know, I love that. Um, that's that's where this thing lives right there. It does, and it, it's 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 both those elements plus all these other things. And then you know, you know, a lot of people were worried about the mystical element of it. Even we were, but mm-hmm. you know, when it's shot. And when we see it, it's still Batland. Right. And there's a reason why these things are layered there. And everything that's in the show this season, or well, starting from the first season, everything there, everything sec- from the second season, it's all related to one thing, and, it's, and it drives a narrative. Sure. And so I just like, to, like the audience to just, just go for the ride and oh, yeah. just... Uh, just just being just being entertained and you know we we do this for the fans i mean you know as an actor dream job yeah oh yeah you know dream sure. job and and i really 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 don't want to disappoint our fans because at the end of the day i'm a fan of the show yeah uh i, I remember getting a phone call from my mom and she goes sherman have you have you checked out into the badlands i'm like no <laughs> No, I didn't. It's a martial arts show, and I'm not on it. No, I didn't. Well, I think you should watch it, Sherman, because I think you're going to end up on that show. Yeah, whatever, Mom. Okay, I got to go. Talk to you later, you know. And I watched the show, and I was like, oh, I'm getting on this show. You're like, this is it. At some point, next season, I'm getting on this show. And it came around. And um, You know who they offered the role to? I do not. Uh, They offered it to Wesley Snipes. What? Yeah, man. Dude, well done. Yeah, I know. I, well done. I know. And and Wesley, <laughs> Wesley, uh, I've worked with him, uh-huh. and he's a cool dude. And I'm a Wesley. I love Wesley's work. Of course. Um, I think he's, you know, he's he's an awesome actor and always present, mm-hmm. always in the moment. Uh, and uh, basically, he held him off for four weeks and just said, you know what? Thanks, guys. And. Thank you, Wesley. I appreciate it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I really, I really appreciate it. I know. I mean, you know, these things happen. You know, I've turned down stuff, and and you know, uh, an actor goes in, and and you know, was right for it. Was good sure. for it. Sure. You know, sometimes you just don't think that you're right for something, mm-hmm. or uh, your career isn't uh, um, directing you towards that area. You may have something else you want to do, sure. and I, that's understandable. You know, that's understandable, and. Um, I, I just thought for me, um, this was just a, uh, they threw me, I, I told um, Michael Taylor, I said, hey, you know, when I read the script on the plane, I mean, you actually threw me a softball. If I could knock this out the park, then something's wrong with me. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Basically, you know, I, I should be able to put on a blindfold and hit this ball out of the park. Oh, yeah. Did you have to go to fight camp before that first episode? You I, miss, I miss fight camp. I what? miss fight camp. You did that scene yeah, without miss- fight camp. Yeah, I, I miss fight camp. I miss fight camp. Dude. My discipline is um, I have a black belt, second degree black belt in Kusu and Taekwondo. It was what? Taekwondo and we learned Kutsu. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't have any sword training at all. I know extremist sticks, but I don't I don't have any um, sword training. Never sure. picked up a sword. Never wow. picked up a sword in my life. So, you know, other than picking it up and swirling it around, ah, you know, but yeah. never the discipline of the sword and learning you know, what part of the sword you want to strike with and this and that, da da da, what you know, how important just striking with the tip of the sword is. Sure. Those things. What's a death stroke? What's a wounding stroke? Sure. Uh didn't know those didn't know those things at all. And not until I got here and then when I got that broadsword, when I s when I stood on that bridge and got that broadsword, you know, they handed the sword to Daniel first because the sword had just came off the press. Ooh. And just finished that sword. And, you know, Daniel looked at it and he goes, Okay. All right. Okay. And he handed it to me and I'm like, dude, this is like really <laughs> heavy. But, you know, you, you just apply yourself. And, yeah. and, and the broad sword is a two-handed sword. I mean, all swords, even the traditional Japanese katana is a oh, two-handed yeah. sword. And uh, you notice that I have to will this thing with one hand. Oh, I noticed. Um, <laughs> this season, and I have to will this you. thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to will this thing with one hand, and which is my weak hand. And I can tell you a story about that. You know, my left hand. <laughs> of course. I'll tell you a story about that. But, um, you know, never, never taken up that discipline at all. Wow. You know, I always wanted to, but I got a crash course into it. And so, yeah, that first scene on the bridge, you know, all the uh, 
the hand to hand stuff, all that was easy, you know. Sure, because you've done it. I didn't know you. Had, that, that I was didn't easy. know you had a black belt, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you how that happened. Yes, please. Uh, so how that happened was I've done a lot of films where you know a lot of fight scenes, and mm-hmm. you know it was just me being an athlete that was able to, you know, apply my athletic skills into these things. Sure. So in 1996, I did a film called Space Marines. Yes. And um, our fight and stunt coordinator was Danny Tan, Lewis's Tan's father. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. Deep, right? Huh. The synergy around this. Yeah, the synergy around this whole thing. Wow. So we had two days of rehearsal for this big fight scene that I had. And... When we shot that scene, we just flew through it. And at the end of the day, he walked up to me and he said, listen, you need to get into martial arts. You will be really, really, really good in this. And, you know, find you a discipline that you really like, but do it. Yeah. Heed my words. You should do it. It's going to pay off. Trust me. And he told two individuals that he told myself and Michael Jai White. Oh, sweet. (laughs) Right. And we both apply that yeah I'd say and so. yeah yeah exactly you know <laughs> look at michael's career uh so years later i ran into danny at a um audition mm-hmm. and uh commercial audition um i think he was there i think he was like going to be doing it was like a big commercial place and with all these different other commercial things there and i think he was there to look at actors for something that he was either directing or or something or was going to be uh uh, fight coordinator on, you know, so they were looking at actors who can have martial arts skill. Sure. So I'm walking, I'm like, oh, hey, oh, no, hey, listen, I got my black belt. And he says, good, <laughs> good. He says, good, you listen. And then, you know, you fast forward to this, well, last year when we started um, production and when Lewis came on, and I'm like, I'm like, Lewis Tan, Lewis Tan, I'm like, looked up every, I'm like, oh man, that's, that's Danny's son. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, you know, so yeah. it's just, and I spoke with him like a couple of months ago and uh, it was just really, 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 it's really awesome that, that the way this whole thing um, happened and uh, mad respect to, to both of them. And uh, Lewis is just, uh, he's killing it. He's, he's killing it. And I, there's a, his, when they introduce the character. Oh yeah. I'm so uh, pumped. It, it's straight. Oh man, uh, I can't even talk about it. It's, just, it's so exciting. The, oh, the fight wait. between him and Caster and Dean Chapman. Oh yes, Game uh, of Thrones. does not know. Yeah, does not know martial arts at all. But he's a <laughs> dancer. He's a dancer. Ah. And I got to tell you, this is my favorite fight scene this season, dude. It's bananas. It's straight up with no wires, none of that stuff. What? These guys. It's bananas. It's awesome. Wait, you'll see. Oh, You'll man. see. God, you, I, you, you know, I kind of got hyped. jealous. I was like, <laughs> I kind of got jealous. Like, oh, wait a minute, that fight scene is off the hook, man. What, you know, I'm looking around like, come on, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> come on. Hey, but yeah, everybody they, has their own individual styles. That's right. So, unless they oh, lose uh, a hand, you know, you'll always have that one up, you know. <laughs> exactly. Your, your fight I scene with you. your fight scene with Sunny last season was so. Oh. It, it, dude, it was like an homage to every great Chinese movie ever. Wasn't it? It was beautiful, Wasn't it? beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely w- love it. Which blew me away is when Daniel told me at um, the producer's house, at Al's house, you know, for the uh, season opener uh-huh. the year before last, I can say that now, at yeah. Al Goff's <laughs> house. Um, he said, yeah, man, that's my that's my favorite fight scene I've ever done on the show. I'm like, what? Yeah. He goes, yeah. I can see it. And, oh, so, I mean, that fight scene was crazy. It was. But I think a good, I think... The fight scene between Lewis and and and, and Dean, uh, that's uh, that's that's close. I Dude, mean, what it's is, bananas. The, I can't wait to see it. The oh, weapons, I saw it already. The weapons that you're using oh. while you're fighting, what are those made of? Right. Uh, there's there's a, several different kinds. There's uh-huh. uh, close to a real one, so we won't cut each other's heads off for real. Smart. There's a, uh, a resident one, and then there's another one that's made out of. Uh, uh, kind of a harder plastic, but they're all made from this 3D printer. Oh, right on. And, uh, you know, there, there's some that can actually cut you. You know, you won't cut you, bleed you to death. But, sure. uh, you know, those are more or less like 
show pieces, you know. So you right. know, if they want to do something with the sword, come in on the sword, you know, it's there. Sure. Um, and uh, How many so have there's you several. <laughs> uh, there's one or two of the uh, the moon swords that got kind of jacked up uh, in rehearsals. Nice, nice. <laughs> and uh, actually, speaking of that, I got to get my sword before I leave. Yeah. yeah. That's, um, why that's why I'm here to remind you of these. Yeah, things. you remind me exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because I put my request in, and they said yes. So I need to oh, get my sword. That's so cool. Yeah, I gotta get that shipped to, to me in LA. <laughs> um, my, my brother and I studied kendo for a lot of years, uh, and I can't tell you how many injuries we've had on our fingers. But we're yeah. like getting smacked in the fingers. Did you have any injuries? A, a lot of that. Have and to, of right? Of course, you know, playing football, I broke almost every finger. Of course. And almost <laughs> who every needs toe, fingers? You, know, you lost a hand, so, you know, yeah, who needs fingers. Fi- exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, th- there's a couple of... This year, I haven't gotten too many knuckle beings, you know. there's You get a lot of knuckle beings, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, swinging swords and stuff like that. Um, you might block too low or somebody might hit you there or whatever, but everybody's so good on the show now yeah. uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that's not happening. And I'm really impressed with, with Aramis and, and Allie. Um, my oh, yeah. fight scenes with them, they they were coming. They Ooh. were coming. And especially Allie. I mean, both of them. They were just like, you know, very fast and just coming. And I appreciate that. I really, I really do. Swinging for the fences, as, oh, I, yeah. as I say. You yeah. know, I, I just told them, I was like, hey, just go for it. Just yeah. go for it. I yeah. get dinged. I get dinged. Just go for it. And they were coming. It's awesome. That's, that's it's so awesome. cool. Dude. Love that. And I, I love that your character is like the guy in the Chinese movies. Like, dude, you have 999 tattoos waiting for that last yeah. one, you know, the cool yeah. lines. Yeah. And then your yeah. fight in the season three opener with the widow was oh. amazing. Oh. Amazing. And you had a rebar oh. hand, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And Emily, Emily is just awesome. Emily Easily is like just... the most badass woman in TV, like ever. Oh, right? uh, <laughs> for real. Right. Dude. Really? I mean, so... You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know She's exactly what you mean. so awesome. She's so awesome. <laughs> I, I remember watching yeah. the premiere, and then she comes up to this, like, graveyard of swords, and I was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder who lives here. And then you come around the corner, I was like, oh, snap. And then she's, and then you're like, oh, I didn't know their names either. I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Such great lines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's like, yeah, you know, exactly. they heard you lost a hand, and he goes, they made damn good practice with my left. I was like, oh, that's two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome dialogue, So isn't good. It? How, how awesome was that dialogue. filmed, fighting up a tower? Was the tower really there? The tower's there. The tower what? is actually a place of, like, you can see it from the production office. Uh, it's oh, like sweet. a couple of miles away on a hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, that particular place used to be a mine, a, uh, a coal mine kind of thing. Oh, no way. And uh, they sealed it off. You can go a couple of feet down the stairs. Oh, cool. Uh, but, yeah, but um, they uh, – so we got their location, and it's close to the public. I mean, there's an open park there, so – but you can't, you know, they <laughs> broke the stairs. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they broke the stairs still to stop people from climbing up those stairs. Oh, okay. Uh, Didn't stop yeah, you guys. And, yeah, <laughs> years ago. And so, uh, and hats off to our, our, our stunt folks, you know, Callie and Ching Mei, who mm-hmm. actually, we went a couple of feet up the thing, but uh-huh. they had to go all the way up. And sure, they had wires on, but, uh, but still. <laughs> you know, they had to go all the way up and then they had to get hoisted up. And it was, it was very dangerous. It took us, it, it, Andy said it, take, it took nine days to shoot that wow. particular sequence, but I think it took longer because when we went into production, the weather had just started changing. And sure. that is overlooking that particular hill was overlooking this, the sea. Right. And that wind was coming in. There were some days where it was just beautiful up there. And then there were some days where it was just miserable. Uh, it wasn't cold. Mm-hmm. It was just windy and rainy. That's Ireland. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's Ireland. <laughs> and basically uh, the cranes would rock. So it was just too dangerous. Oh, God. And yeah, and so uh, it took us a long, long, long time to shoot that sequence. As far as the fighting is concerned, I would say the fighting on the ground took us about five days. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot. Oh yeah. Well, it took eight days to shoot the scene on the bridge. So. Oh wow. Each particular yeah, each particular sequence of fighting takes anywhere between four and eight mm-hmm. days. Gotcha. Not including yeah. rehearsal. Not including rehearsal. Well, rehearsal. There's no rehearsal on this show. Sorry. What? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Master really? D goes, okay, we're going to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And then everybody learns it. Your fight doubles learn it, and you learn it. 
and then you know you just go do it no way you just go do it yeah that's how it is there's no rehearsal i mean and we we had a meeting with everyone you know before we started because master didi didn't get here until we said that um particular sequence we were Uh in our second day and then master didi showed up so what they tried to do because he was working on on another project so what we tried to do our last four to five days in fight camp was start working on a sequence Uh of being at the top and going up the stairs and so emily and i were working on that and i just looked at emily and i said you know this is all out the window and yeah. <laughs> Master Dig is here. You know that, right? Of course. And so they're just they're just keeping us here. So, you know, this is just part of fight camp, so we might as well just get over it. Uh-huh. And so she said, yeah, you're right. And sure enough, when we shot that sequence, all the stuff that we were learning went out the window, and we had to restart and learn some, something else. And we learned it on the day, on the spot. And you learn it, you got five to eight minutes, and then you're shooting it. Wow. That's it. That's Dude, it. How long is fight camp? Fight camp this year was three weeks. Man, that's extensive. Uh, I, yeah, I know the first season they had six weeks. The uh, Yeah, they had six weeks the first season. We had three. I actually asked Daniel the other night. I'm like, okay, so there's a rumor going around that, you know, we're going to do six weeks of fight camp. He goes, no, we're only going to do three when we come back. <laughs> we don't need six We're only going to do three. <laughs> we don't need, no, we don't need six. We don't need six. No, no, Dude. no. Because everyone's pretty, pretty much wired in. Yeah. And uh, everyone actually goes back home and trains ah that makes sense it's like a year-round thing where you're just you're just building up your toolkit and then on set you're like oh we'll just figure it out i know how to punch and kick so we'll figure it out exactly exactly and that's what's going to happen i mean you know everybody's when you get home you probably take a couple of days off but you got to get right back into it plus we're going to have probably pickups for the second half of the season Uh uh-huh so and those pickups will probably be uh i would say late june early july uh before because uh, i think we all are committed to go to comic-con in san diego so i think we'll be Ooh, back here nice uh yeah doing uh some uh, pickups so yeah the training keeps going of course of course have you been yeah. to a con before uh, yeah i went last year uh for um a film that i did called virus Oh, I remember uh, Virus. I down, yeah, I went down there with my, John Bruno and I went down, uh, and we hung out in the booth with Mike Richardson, and you know, a bunch of folks came by, and you know it was really cool. You know it was really cool, and um, I love that movie. I that it's that so that gross. was fun. <laughs> I know it is, it is, it is, it, it is. It was a gross You're film. Like that. digging in an android's head. <laughs> oh, oh, I love that. That day was fun because when it jumped, they didn't tell me it was going to jump. So oh, when really? I said, I'm just, I, when I said. When I said, I'm just looking at it, Steve, I really meant it. I was like, man, they, they made this some bitch jump on the table. They didn't tell me that. Yeah, it was a trip. Oh, it, I mean, bam. Oh, okay. okay. That's, why, that's why that moment rang so true when you're like, it wasn't me. And yeah. I'm like, I'm, and that's why I was like, just looking at it, Steve. And I'm thinking to myself, they should have told me something. It was a couple of those moments they did. They did a couple of those things to me. Um, and uh, I remember when Goliath had got there. And they assembled the big, gigantic thing. And mm-hmm. um, I went by and was like, oh, man, this is cool. But Donald Sutherland wouldn't go by the particular stage. It was there because it freaked him out. I mean, it actually freaked him out. And so they it. had the door open, and he walked by. I'm not going by there. <laughs> it actually freaked him out. So oh, it, was, it, was, it was a trip. It was, that film was absolutely just a – it took us six months to shoot that film. That was a fun film to do. I really enjoyed that film. It, it really did. It prepared you all the blood. <laughs> it it did. It did. It did. That was a. Uh, uh, it was awesome. And you know, with this show, of course, yes, there is a lot of blood, and um, it gets gory. It, it gets does. gory. It does. It has yeah. to. It's the Badlands. Yeah. It's it's the Badlands. Yeah. I mean, you know, like when I smashed the guy's head on the bridge. Like, yeah, you cut it off last. and kicked it. You, oh another yeah, guy. that was awesome, wasn't it? <laughs> Was, that was awesome. Yeah. I'm Gold. like, ooh, I like this show. Right. Yeah. Cut heads off and You're kicking like, them. This yeah. is my entrance? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Ex- I'm, in. <laughs> ex- I'm in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is it. I just want to grab somebody's intros and, like, can I jump rope with this? You yeah, know? right. Yeah. yeah. I've <laughs> seen know? Machete I'm... use it as a rope. How do we do this? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 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 I need the top Machete. Of course. Yes, exactly. Of course. Exactly. I love well, it. Well, I, I'll get there. I'll get there. That's right. I, I'll figure out something where I can just, you know, take somebody's files out and go, yeah. That's right. Go, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last episode yeah, had a woman hanging from hooks, so I think you're oh. on the way. 
<laughs> yeah, that was that was gnarly. That so was uh, really gnarly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of folks uh, that I talked to, especially my friends, you know, when they saw that they had to turn away, and I'm like, really? Right. Uh, that's cool. All right. Yeah, that's like, cool. You I... haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you haven't. You have not seen anything. It's going to get even worse, my friend. That's right. That's right. Take it from Nathaniel Moon. Take it from me. Trust me. There's some. There's some. Some gags in this show this this season that is going to. I mean, it's not like they're topping each one. It's just that you know, it's yeah, there. The you stakes. Know? The stakes get higher. They have to. The stakes. Yeah, they have to. Yeah. You know, Sonny has a baby now, so you know. Exactly. <laughs> Difficulty yeah, raised. That's, that's not gonna. That's not gonna stop Sonny. Trust yeah, me. of course. Not, that doesn't stop that character at all at all so you know there's a couple of things there's a couple of storyboards that i saw um that were just completely freaking awesome but um you know they got close to it Mm -hmm. but not too close because i think it kind of related too much to um uh the lone wolf and the cub sure uh the japanese film yeah yeah. you know but it's there it's yeah. there, you know, and it's just, just really, I mean, this is a really great, awesome show to do. Uh, I, I couldn't, I would have a hard time. I would still watch the show, but I would be so envious that I wasn't on the show. Oh, yeah. Especially this season. Oh, for I sure. I would be, yeah, I, you know, I'd probably be mad and, you know, I'm not <laughs> yeah. watching the show and That's watch right. the show. I'll catch you know. up when I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch the show. That's right. You know, I would watch the show and just be like, you know, like, I hear you. Okay, I hear you. you know, <laughs> but uh, I am, I am so glad because I'm just a fan of the show and I believe in what they're doing and I think each and every character is very well developed. Agreed. This season, this 100%. season, and then the storylines, and I'm really gonna geek out when everyone sees how these storylines individually are going to slowly but surely come to one junction yeah of course and when that happens it's all for a common goal now the big thing about that is once we get to the end of the second part of the the season Mm -hmm. um there's something else that's going to happen that's even worse oh sherman you can't do this to me (laughs) i shouldn't say it but then there's all these other elements within the first eight and in the second eight of some other new things and other new people and other new threats. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You're going to learn about, uh, well, can I say this? Oh, let me see. Let me think. I'm thinking here. All right. So there is another group. Um, she's, <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> We're pumped. It's going to be a great second half of the season. I'm really glad that exactly. you guys are longer. I, I got you. I got yeah. you, Sherman. I got you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank but, uh, you. Well, I, I can say there's a, there's a group called the the Black Lotus, ooh. and uh, they're uh, they're no joke. Ominous. Can't wait. Can't so wait. you think you have you have Pilgrim and the Black Lotus, and then you have us. So. I think you can probably figure that out right now. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Can you yeah. believe we've been yeah. talking for over an hour already? Oh, oh, dude, I, really? I didn't even know. Uh, yeah, oh, that's great. That's, that's right. Great. That's right. I hope you have a good I, time. I, I, love the, I love these kind of conversations because that's what it is. It's actually a conversation. Yes. You know what I mean? Thank you. That's why I don't call these interviews because I'm, 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 I mean, no. I'm interested in genuine human connection, and I think we're losing it, that a lot. <laughs> exactly. So I was exactly. like, let's, let's talk and get to know each other as people. And like everyone, exactly. sto- everyone has stories, and I love all of it and the journey it takes people and yeah. well, like i said I hope, I hope you've had a good time this has been really fun oh it's been great thank yeah. you so much i appreciate it absolutely any time any time any time oh don't you don't you do any, that <laughs> it, well anytime i would like to i would like to have another conversation with you especially once we get around ooh, uh episode six done Done. We'll have episode you back on. Six, episode six, you're going to be like, what the hell, Sherman? Okay, <laughs> yeah. you didn't, You'll just you be didn't getting tell messages. Me. Sherman? <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait. Episode six, you're going you're gonna to be like, oh, man, this is okay. All right, this is crazy. I'm calling okay. in right now. Cannot wait. So where can people find you online? Uh, they can find me. Uh, I don't have a website or anything, but, you know, I do have the, uh, the, um, the Instagram page Perfect. and uh, the Twitter page. And I'm still here, so it's hard for me to tweet 
mm-hmm. live during the show, but I'm going to try to st- stay up as uh, long as I can Sunday night because there's a couple of things that happen Ooh-hoo. Sunday uh, that, yeah, that I definitely want to uh, throw uh, throw my little uh, uh, self into the mix because it's going to be, you know, Moon gets to... Uh, Moon gets to do his. Uh, how can I put this? <laughs> Moon gets to uh, uh, play a. Uh, uh, Moon gets to do a little um, play a Sedea move. Ooh. You'll see. Ooh, yeah, can't wait. you'll see. Can't wait. <laughs> you'll see. So, so on Twitter, uh, and it, gets, it gets on Twitter and on uh, Instagram. Perfect. At Shermgus. At Shermgus. I love it. Yeah, I love at it. At Shermgus. This is great. And great. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you enjoyed it, stop by iTunes, give it a five-star rating. It really does help push the show to the front of the algorithm so that more people can find it. Uh, If you'd like to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff as Jedi Brian. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. So until next time, be well.